What up African world, it's Home Team here and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. And today, we're going to take a closer look at the Tubu people. And as always, if you want to support the Home Team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and Home Team merchandise are in the description box below. The Tubu are also known as the Teta people and they're found mostly in northern Chad, southern Libya, and eastern Niger. Their name in the Kanuri language apparently means inhabitants of Tu, Tu meaning rocks, and Bu meaning a person or people of the rocks. The word Tu is also used to mean the Tebesti mountains, thus their name means people of the Tebesti, a remote inaccessible area that remains today a major Tubu stronghold. The Tubu are predominantly pastoralists raising camels and other livestock and cultivating date palms and small gardens where water supplies permit. Now, some scholars have proposed that the Tubu are among the most ancient of the Sahara's inhabitants. It's also been proposed that the Tubu people have an ancient connection with the Garamanti civilization in some form or another. The Garamanti's best known export in ancient times was cited to be called carbuncles, or today known as Amazonite. The source of this stone is in the eastern foothills of the Tebesi Mountains, and it's still extracted by the Tubu people today. Another interesting ancient reference to the Tubu people comes from the ancient Egyptians themselves. In pharaonic times, Amazonite was mined, and considerable quantities of it were exported in ancient Egypt. Amazonite was known to the ancient Egyptians as Temhu or Tempi. It's been suggested that the Egyptians knew of the Tubu people under the name Temhu. There's no solid evidence to affirm these connections, but it most certainly is plausible. The Tubu are divided into two major branches, the Teta and the Daza. The Teta are the core of the Tubu people today. The southern Daza are cattle herders. The Daza are generally considered a separate group, but the Teta and Daza are further subdivided into a number of clans. The Teta call their dialect Tedaga, and the Daza call theirs Dazaga. Both languages belong to the western branch of the Nilo-Saharan phylum. Some scholars still hold that the Tubu may be of at least partial Berber origin, but this hasn't been confirmed. Although the Tubu have been linked to the founding of the Kingdom of Kanem, they were being pushed back toward the north by the early 13th century. Their northern limits were set by their need for savanna pastures, reinforced by Ottoman pressures from Libya. The Tubu have been Muslim for centuries, although still retaining certain pre-Islamic spiritual beliefs and practices. As warrior nomads, they were able to exact protection rents from both caravans and from sedentary settlements in the vicinity of their territories. Subservient to the Daza are a craft-making people called the Aza. The Aza work wood, metal, and leather and provide the tent poles for the Tubu. The Aza are or were hunters who sold to the Tubu a number of items from their hunting, including finely tanned leather bags as well as fresh and dried meat. The Aza hunting abilities are held in a degree of awe, and the skins of animals they provide are used for a number of magical items by the Tubu. The most important are the charms suspended at the head of the bed and on camels called Kubu, Audrey, or Della. Tubu women have a very interesting and peculiar reputation for being so-called free and are known to embarrass their husbands by stripping in public, even though this is strictly from a male's perspective. By the 19th century, the Tubu established a sultanate at Kuar in present-day Niger, replacing the Kanembranu kingdom as overlords of the oasis and salt pans around Bilma. At the same time, they themselves became subject to the even more powerful Tuareg people. At the onset of colonial penetration into the region, the Tubu allied themselves with the Sanu Sia, a reformist Sufi Muslim order based in Libya, strongly opposed to foreign rule. The Teta particularly played a leading role in ongoing anti-French resistance in both Niger and Chad, 
with the Tibesti regaining an effective independence between 1914 and 1930, only lightly controlled at best during the colonial period, the Tubu people have been involved in a series of rebellions against the various governments of Chad that followed independence in 1960. The Tubu were also impacted in the 1980s by conflicts between Libya and Chad focused on control of the Azu Strip along Chad's northern border and more recently the conflict in Sudan's Darfur. The Tubu in Libya suffered what has been described as massive discrimination both under the leadership of Gaddafi as well as after the Arab Spring. The Society for Threatened Peoples reported massive discrimination against the Tubu minority which resides in the southeastern corner of the country around the oasis of Kufra. In December 2007, the Gaddafi regime stripped the Tubu Libyans of their citizenship, claiming that they were not Libyans but rather Chadians. In addition, local authorities denied Tubu people access to education and healthcare. In response, an armed group called the Tubu Front for the Salvation of Libya staged an uprising in November 2008 which lasted for five days before being stopped. Be beginning in November 2009, the government began a program of forced eviction and demolition of Tubu homes, rendering many Tubu homeless. Several dozens who protested the destruction were arrested, and families who refused to leave their homes were beaten. Even though the Tubu people suffered from varying levels of oppression in North Africa, their history in the region is very ancient and they've been the social and economic backbone and middlemen between North Africa and nations further south, having their hand in the development of various kingdoms and empires. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.